Good morning. Welcome back. You're still watching The Break on this 8th day of April 2024. Again, to introduce my panelists, I will do that shortly. But first, on the main daily, is the standard is saying the cost of being Kenyan from birth to death, Kenyans will now pay more, not only to be citizens, but also sustain themselves. And on page two and three, they give a detailed account of what that exactly means, including looking at um, um, the salary. If your gross salary is 30,000 shillings, your take home uh, might be 26,010 shillings. Uh, that is while including um, social health insurance fund of 825 shillings. If your gross salary is 50,000 shillings, your take home might be 39,160 after calculating a social health insurance fund for 1,375. And also they are looking at uh, the various charges for different services. For instance, national ID, previously it was free, now it's becoming 300 shillings. Replacing a lost ID used to be 100 shillings, now 1,000 shillings. New birth certificate from 50 shillings to 200 shillings. Death certificate from 50 shillings to 200 shillings. And there's so much more that you find there, including a passport of 34 pages, was 4,500 shillings, now 7,500 shillings. And that's the explanation they give as being costly for being Kenyan. On the Daily Nation, it is Uhuru's political traitors is the main story. Mr. Kenyatta had a falling out with the president, well, with President Ruto. He's then deputy in the run-up to the 2022 general election. And they give uh, uh, what he said during that um, ordination uh, mass for the two auxiliary bishops in the Catholic um, Church in Nairobi. Neglect by state leaves education sector in private hands. C.S. Machogo recently uh, disclosed that uh, close to 70% of children in Nairobi attend private institutions, saying that was a crisis because it means uh, that uh, the facilities in Nairobi, especially the public ones, are not able to, they don't have the capacity uh, to deal with the population in Nairobi. Senator Leda Molikina uh, joins us, is the minority whip at the Senate. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Uh, Deputy Speaker Gladys Bose, good morning. Good morning. Mwishmua um, Robert Mbui, uh, Deputy Minority Leader of the National Assembly, good morning. Good morning, Sam. And Geoffrey Andeto is the Member of Parliament for Tetu Constituency, good morning. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, viewers. Right, and I want us to begin by looking at the top story on the Daily Nation, which is we can't afford to pay you. Ruto tells doctors we'll shortly be listening to the voice of the President. And it is concerning, Deputy Speaker, that um, it is now... 26 days since the start of the strike, and this is all the president is saying. Our friends, the doctors, that we mind about them, we value the, the service they give to our nation, but we must live within our means. The resources we have are only sufficient to pay 70,000 shillings for intern uh, doctors, it is not a salary, it is a stipend for only one year, and then they will be employed. And we want all our doctors, all our doctor interns, to be taken in. All right, apologies for that uh, challenge at the start of that clip, but the content is quite clear. Deputy Speaker is asking me why I'm starting, I'm addressing, no, I wasn't actually addressing you. It is <laughs> no, that, because I, you I, said, I Deputy Speaker, it has be been 27, whatever. Yeah, and I was then, waiting for the clip to be ready. Then it, as you introduced the, the president's question. speech. Yeah, so um, talk to us about <clears throat> 26 days later, and mm. this is when the president is speaking, and the communication is that we have no money that would really um, address your concerns. What has this come to? <clears throat> you know, I mean, the issues of doctor strikes has been with us for many years. It's mm -hmm. not just under this regime. It's in the previous regime and the regime previous to that and so on. So we've always had a challenge. I, and this, this, you must look at it from a historical perspective. Mm -hmm. There was a time that we would only churn out 300 doctors from the, uh, from the universities. But the time that number grew to at least one, I think it used to be 300 every year. It has increased to about 1,500 or even more per year. So what happened is doctors were always guaranteed employment, mm -hmm. guaranteed <clears throat> internship, uh, which was paid. Mm -hmm. They were always guaranteed um, 
the dollars guaranteed like for their postgraduate studies, they would actually be paid by government. The education would be paid, but they would also work in the hospitals. And mm -hmm. there were good resources to the hospitals, and everyone acknowledged that. But with the increase of the numbers, that's where the challenge now began to come. Especially because uh, the, 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 before the training of doctors was just in government universities, public universities. Then eventually private universities began to train more of those, more, more of those doctors. What happened is uh, there wasn't, um, at the time, there wasn't a, a decision what to do with, all the, with those numbers. It turns out that in 2017, they signed a CBA. And you know it was an election year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is where now the problem began. Because, the, for example, the, in, the, intern, the interns were put in the CBA. Mm -hmm. The doctors who are doing their masters who are students were also, were also included. And it, so there's been discrepancies and problems. So this, is, this was something that was signed in a previous government, and now this government has to deal with it. Unfortunately, it has come at a time when the country doesn't have resources. But what I'm happy about is that the president has acknowledged that he respects the service of the doctors. He knows that the doctors provide a very important service to our country. Mm -hmm. They are a major pillar in the social health uh, insurance fund that is coming into force, and I think that will help many of these challenges. And so the, the problem is it's an inherited system. Sorry, what will Social Health Insurance Fund address in a doctor's strike? You see, when the, when the Social Health Insurance Fund is operating, it means all hospitals mm -hmm. will be able to, uh, to get resources. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, the way the uh, NHIF was being run, is that certain privileged private hospitals were the ones who were getting paid by NHIF, and sometimes it was even fictitious bills. Then you find that other hospitals were, because they were logging in, only what the services that they got. Mm. So you find that when they saw more, if a hospital is paid, it means they're able to provide a better service, mm -hmm. and there's usually the amount that a hospital earns, they usually keep it in the county hospitals. Yeah. They usually keep it, and they are able to use it to actually run the hospital without asking for extra money. In many I, I, counties, I they don't that. return it. Back. I am missing the connection between how SHIF will streamline the service delivery and how that helps the grievances that the doctors have raised, especially on implementation of the CBA 2017-2021, as well as the question of medical interns. What we're saying is that there has been a shortage there's been a shortage of resources in the health sector. Most of it has to do with the, mis the, the mismanagement that was going on of NHIF. Because you, like you say, I, I, but like I said, when people visit even a sub-county hospital, yeah, when people pay, whether it's through NHIF or the others, there's always resource. That resource is kept within those hospitals, and the ho the person who's the superintendent of the hospital, the medical superintendent, has the money, and therefore they can eat with that. The, the counties will now be able to rationalize the way they pay. Because if you listen to what the doctors are complaining about, it's not just the pay. Yeah. It's just that from, they're also complaining about from county to county, people are paid differently. The different pub, public service boards in the counties will maybe promote somebody of a certain job group and then not, and in another county, the equivalent person yeah. has not been put on a proper job group. That's why the only way to deal with it now is to look at it holistically mm. so that you rationalize across the counties. There will be less outcry on this. Okay. Also, there's a positive, uh, from what the president has said, there's something positive that has come out. He's saying all interns will be taken. Because what has also been happening, not all interns, not all people who, fin or not pe or everybody was being taken was being absorbed. Okay, I, I, I hear you. Um, but let's let's listen to something else uh, that the president said in terms of uh, wage bill and why it's difficult to honor uh, the call by the interns, medical interns. We are spending 1.1 trillion shillings every year to pay salaries and wages of the 2.4 of the 2.2 trillion we collect. It is way above 
what we should be spending. We are spending 47%. Our wage bill is 47% of our revenues. It should be 35% according to the law. So we are way above. Sorry, sorry, let me circulate the question first. Honorable Mboye, talk to me about um, the explanation the president is giving. Um, do, do you agree with it? But also, are you concerned the time it's taken to hear from the president, even as um, the deputy speaker explains that the future should look brighter, bearing in mind all the reforms that are being implemented in the health insurance scheme? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Sam, um, this is a very, very emotive uh, topic. You know, right now it is almost a month since the doctors went on strike. And some, you know, uh, within that period, you know that many, many Kenyans have been unwell and uh, people have lost lives. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's a bottom line. We must realize that uh, the more we debate this issue in boardrooms, uh, out there in the streets, people are losing lives. And it is very unfortunate that uh, uh, His Excellency, the President, has actually spoken almost a month after the strike uh, began. And, and that, uh, you know, speaks to the issue of taking responsibility. Some, you know, um, this CBA was, uh, was, was, uh, was agreed and uh, signed in 2017. And uh, the, the Deputy Speaker has uh, ably said that uh, it was done by another government. But I want to dispel that myth. You know, the government of 2017, the current president was actually deputy president. And the other thing you have to note is that governments exist in perpetuity. So you cannot say that it was another government. It was a government of the Republic of Kenya that went into an agreement with these uh, doctors so that they could uh, be able to uh, you know, improve their, their, their terms of service and also to make sure that they take care of the interns. So for me, I think the, 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 we, we, we must uh, move away from giving excuses. The president himself has said here that uh, we have to live within our means. You know what, uh, Sam, it is, it is surprising when the president says we have to live within our means. But yet, on a continuous basis, every Kenyan is expected to pay more. So how is it that the government is supposed to live within its means, yet I cannot live within the means that I have always lived within because they are taking more money from me on a monthly basis, on a daily basis? Everything. You've looked at uh, standard year has uh, the kind of taxation. We are paying, we are keeping more money at the NSSF, which means we are saving more for the future. Mm. And you know, some this money that is being taken away from us for now, and we are being told to take it when we are older, is actually in the hands of government, and they can spend it now. You know, we are paying more in uh, pay as you want. We are paying more for social health insurance fund. We are paying uh, a housing levy that we were, you know, we didn't want. So basically, at the end of the day. When the president talks about uh, living within our means, how come he is concerned that the government has to live within certain means, yet he's not worried about the public itself? So but some, for me, I think the, the, the government needs to take responsibility. This thing has taken too long. Um, if you come up, if you did an agreement, and, and you know, the, the, the question I would ask is this, where is all this extra money that they are collecting from us going, if they cannot afford to? When the CBA was, CBA was signed in 2017, the tax uh, bracket in Kenya and the amount of collection from, gov from, from, from taxation was much lower than it is now based on the kind of uh, you know, punitive uh, tax uh, you know, systems that have been put in place. So how come uh, so many years later they cannot even afford to pay the doctors? I think we need to stop playing games and I think we have to take responsibility. You've heard the doctors say that they are sometimes they've gone for talks and the, and the, and the government officials, the executive walks out on them. I, I think for me, I would, I would, I would urge that uh, all of us, especially those who are seated here, because we are, we are part of the legislative arm, let us, let us support the doctors to get their rights. Because at the end of the day, the only one who can finish this stalemate uh, the sum is the government. It cannot be the doctors, because the doctors are only asking for their rights. So the, the president and his team have to respect the <coughs> rights of doctors. Interesting. <clears throat> and this conversation is stretching to the scriptures, and this is what they have said. We must live within our means. And we are going to have a bigger conversation as Kenyans, so that when the Bible says that a responsible father leaves an inheritance for their children, we as Kenyans, we should not leave debt to our children. 
we should leave an inheritance. But the same Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 7 states clearly that which father will give his children snakes when they ask for, for fish? Or which one will give his children stone when they ask for bread? And therefore we are asking for bread that we have been eating for the last seven years. So, Moshimu and Deto, um, we now have to consult the Bible um, for a CBA that has been with us for seven years. In fact, Gladys Boss reminds us that um, it was agreed upon in 2017, an election year, in which President William Ruto was the deputy president seeking re-election. Okay, Sam, I, th I think I'll start by saying the, the issue of the doctor's uh, strike and uh, the ensuing uh, health crisis is a life and death matter. It's actually a very, very serious matter. And um, it is sad that um, we are now on uh, day 26 of the strike. And I think uh, personally, we, I, I would like to, to call upon all the parties involved uh, to do their best to resolve uh, this crisis. Because as we talk, as we negotiate, there is a mother out there, an expectant mother, who possibly will deliver without the requisite uh, health care. There could be a road accident victim who will be requiring um, urgent uh, medical intervention who may not get it, and uh, this is a serious issue. I think the thing is, none of the parties should act selfishly. Um, you asked why the president, I think, was silent for uh, you know, 26 days, and I think this, the president has a very, very competent uh, cabinet secretary, has a competent uh, uh, principal secretary, and a team of other officials who have been uh, handling this. You know he had dispatched none other than the, um, the, the, the secretary to the cabinet, uh, the, the, the head of civil service, to basically uh, assist in, in, in this mediation. <clears throat> and um, the government has put out an offer. Um, the president has actually affirmed that offer yesterday, you know, saying they'll be paying other interns, uh, the 70,000. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, and the thing is, uh, Sam, this is a very, very tricky a balancing act. We, as a country, are only raising X amount of money. And that's the money that has to be deployed to salaries. It's the same money that has to be deployed, actually a significant part of it, to repayment of debt, something we cannot run away from now. It's a reality that a significant part of our resources go into servicing our debt. And it's the same money that we have to deploy for development. And so, every time you are faced with a situation like this one, it may look like it's a simple thing doctors are only asking for. I think I heard Robert saying, I don't know, it's 2.4 billion shillings or whatever. It's 3.5. 3.5 billion shillings. That's a lot of money. But that's the area. If you look at the balancing act that has to be done within the budget to accommodate uh, all, the situ all the things that we have to do, even 3.5 billion shillings is not little money. And this money has to come from somewhere. It will either come by us um, either sacrificing another essential service, you know, by, by decreasing our allocation to some other essential service, or raising additional revenues, uh, you know, from somewhere else, which, you know, currently, none of those are palatable to, you know, you, know, you know, to Kenyans. So what I would suggest is that doctors, in this case, at least take what has been given. The president I mean, has clearly so, said, allow so, me to finish. So, sorry. sorry, as you finish, mm. why should doctors take what you're saying seriously if they put down in writing in 2017 something that has not been respected now. What and is that, the worth of what is being said now? And, and that's what we are saying. You know, you have a collective bargaining agreement, okay? Maybe things that were put there, and, and, uh, and uh, Gladys has clearly said this was signed in an election year. Maybe so. Uh, people are feeling generous. Sometimes in election so, years, so people who feel... signed it? I mean, William well, Root was the deputy president. It, 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 it was, was signed by, it was signed by the, the CS or the PS at that time. It was time. SRC. I think. And there was a at, government at, in place. At, at that time, and there was a there. government in place. And I think what the government is currently saying that, look here, some of the things that have been put there, we cannot be able to implement them as they are. I don't think the government has totally said that we will never implement them. And I think one approach is to say, do we renegotiate this uh, CBA? Do we push a few things forward, that the ones that we cannot be able to do right now? Do we maybe create a longer, you know, implementation time frame so that we are able to, you know, to be able to implement this? Uh, because uh, some what the president is saying, uh, and, and you have said that we have now invoked scripture, which is, a, you know, which is a, is, a, is a good thing. The president clearly said that as a country, and he has been on record saying we have to build savings and capital. 
We cannot be a country that spends everything that, that we get. We cannot be a country that borrows recklessly. Otherwise, we are not going to leave any inheritance you know, for our children. And, I, and, and, and to the KPM, you know, the, the chair of the, of, of the doctors, who said that uh, you know, no father will, uh, no child will ask for a stone and he's, I mean, bread and is given a stone. Yep. I don't think the government has offered a stone. Maybe what the government has done is that the child may have wanted uh, you know, a full bread and they're saying we have these five slices. Have them in the meantime. Sorry. You, you can say have it, another five slices you tomorrow. You said the president has been quiet because he has a competent team of CS and PS. Yeah. Why has the head of public service been on chairing meetings attended by CSs? Because he's the head of, he's the secretary of the cabinet. No, he's not. He's not. Well. What was actually happening? Sorry. No, let, let, sorry. Me, let, let me just put it. I mean, if you look at, at his position as head of civil service, some of the things that we are dealing with here, these are ministry issues, okay? So, and he's a much more senior person. You know, uh, you know, he's been there. Senior than no, he's not. Secretary. He, he, I'm not trying to say he's senior. He's actually, I think, a rank more or less the same. But I think, in terms of even representing, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the government. Sorry, and, and how the does the head of public service rank the same as the CS? Well, I, uh, some, to be honest, I do not want to get into let me, let who, me is, explain. It's who, who, very who, is, who is who is more senior. But what I'm it's trying to say, senior. I'm asking a simple him, question. Sorry, by, by, by him coming forward. Honorable I'm asking yes. a simple question. Mm -hmm. There is a question: industrial action in the health ministry. Yes. There is a cabinet secretary called Nahume Chowafula. Yes. Why is the head of public service chairing a meeting of CSS? If the, you remember that initial meeting that had CS Ndungu, CS Nahumicha, CS Bore, and I think CS Korea. Because this now became an intergovernmental issue. It was not just domiciled in one ministry. Treasury was involved. Uh, the Labor uh, Ministry was involved. Um, you know, uh, the Health Ministry was involved. So I think he's the right person because he's bringing, uh, you know, an, an interdisciplinary team, you know, of civil servants. And this is their, you know, their boss to basically be able to push their agenda. I think uh, okay. he, he's the right person, actually, to deal with something okay. that, that you, cuts you, across. You say he's the right person yeah. in a cabinet that yeah. has a Labor CS. I'll get to you, Honorable Boss, but first, uh, Senator Leda Morikina, tell me, so if we get into this situation and the doctors have been saying they want the president to address the situation, the president has come and said what the officials have been saying. So is there an end in sight? Let me try to demystify this for Kenyans to understand exactly what it is that the doctors are saying. The doctors are saying, first of all, there is wastage of public funds, but this, can, this government is hypocritical. It doesn't really care about the needs of the people. Number one, if you look at the travel budget of the national government alone, it was about um, 11.3 billion. That is from July to December of 2023. What the doctors are saying is that, listen, we have a CBA that said that pay us 12,000 shillings extra. Pay us that money. Respect the court orders, number one. The doctors are saying the interns were getting 206,000 shillings. Now, the president is saying we can only give you 70,000 shillings. If you look at health, health is devolved. Mm -hmm. But in this country, we have a tendency of ignoring, you know, devolution. How much are we allocating to the Ministry of Health? The Ministry of Health, and remember health is devolved, gets about 11% of our total budget, which is 147 billion Kenya shillings. Where are we keeping money in the ministry, yet health is devolved? Mm -hmm. Number three, the doctors are saying we are overworked. Please employ more people, mm -hmm. you know? But they are not being employed. The doctors are saying provide us with medical cover so that when we are taking care of the sick, we can be able to make sure that we all, even us, we are taken care of. But guess what? They get a slap on their face. Mm -hmm. Because the president now is pushing to employ more of his friends, the CASs, and if you look at the budget of the CASs alone, it is around about 458 million shillings. Only if you only take about 22 of them, you know, a year. So, I mean, what would you want to prioritize? To prioritize, is it the health of your people, or is it to be able to reward your friends, to give them positions which are not even recognized by law? Number two, we are looking at, like, let's say, for instance, a salary of even those 22 CASs. If you, if if they proceed and employ those 22 CASs, it is equivalent to a salary of a gross salary of 91 interns. 
91 interns. Because an intern is only saying what we agreed on is give us 206,000 gross. We take home 130,000 shillings net. What is so difficult to understand that? So, and so then, how are you calculating that again? If you, if, you take, if you take the amount of money that an intern gets, uh -huh. it's 206,000, which is supposed, well, that's what they're supposed to get. Yeah. Their net is 130 after you take all the taxes. Their net take home is 130,000 shillings. If you look at almost the net of a CAS is about 806,000 shillings, do the math. If you take 806 interns, 806,000, uh, which is the salary of a CAS, and you multiply by 22, multiply by, you know, you'll, you'll get the figure. If you divide 806,000 divided by, by, by three, you will get 206,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they are saying pairs, but we seem not to prioritize this. I find it very hypocritical that we go to churches and we read scriptures. I will read a scripture for you. Proverbs 14, 31 says that whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt to their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. How are we honoring God? Yet we have a bloated government top, you know, you know national government uh, travel expenditure. We lie to the public that we are cutting down on travel. Yet, if you look at a loan, it is 11.38 billion. Don't you think that, man, that money could have been able to pay a lot of doctors? Could you could have honored the CBA? That money could have actually been able to ensure that we have proper care. Why are we keeping billions, 11% of our annual budget? Why are we keeping it in the Ministry of uh, Health? You know, we should go back to form follows functions. We have devolved. So I think the only way to resolve this now is for us to be sincere with each other. Since health is devolved, county governments, which are heavily corrupt, should also now start saying, because the national government, which wants to take over all our responsibilities, mm. is not doing it, we, we, we now need to start negotiating with our own doctors. Listen to this. Recently, we were rushed to pass the facility Health Fund, mm -hmm. FIF, mm -hmm. okay? Now, even in that FIF, we are now creating a conflict of the PFM Act. If you look at the PFM Act, the CEC in charge of finance is head of treasury. But now, even in the FIF, we are now making the CEC in charge of health to be the head of that fund. So we are creating a conflict there. Okay. So the problem is this, mm -hmm. and, I, and I just want to end by saying this. The problem is this. We really do not care about the, the poor. We don't care about our health sector in this country. What the president needs to do, he needs to be able to appoint competent individuals. If you compare the former minister of health when he started, and you compare with the current minister of health who is there right now, he is completely incompetent. You know, the current minister of health is completely incompetent. She doesn't really understand the needs of these doctors. She doesn't understand the needs of Kenyans. So what we need to do is to sit down and be honest with each other but, but and take been, the figures. There has been a whole of nation approach into this. A whole of nation. Everyone is saying that Komicha needs to pack and go because she's not understanding. You cannot come in and now say is SRC. It, is listen, it that whole of nation approach? Listen, it is um, not. You know, the people are saying she's failing because she's top. She's supposed to show leadership. The first thing she should do as a cabinet secretary is to say, Mr. President, there is a court order here. We must respect it. Let us give these people, add the doctors their 12,000 shillings. Let us increase. Instead of reducing, how can you reduce someone's pay to almost 90%? How? You know, these interns are overworked. Sam, I want you to leave these studios and traverse. I sit in the health committee. Mm. So whatever I'm telling you is factual. It doesn't make sense to keep 11% of our annual budget in the Ministry of Health, okay. yet health is devolved. All right. Is it? <clears throat> I want us to take a short break, but before we do, mm -hmm. Honorable Boss, you wanted to explain something about why the head of public no, service is chairing the meeting of CSS. So, uh, because this has, remember this, uh, many of them are public servants, many of the, some of the doctors, that is why. So again, it's also a public service issue because you have to look at the HR when in negotiating, in renegotiating, which the doctors agreed because they sat together, in renegotiating it is to try and rationalize the pay for doctors in the public service, the progression of doctors in the public service. It's good to do with that. And I, like I said, there were so many contradictions in the way it's done at the county level. And that's why even if you remember, 
Uh, when the doctors, uh, you know, were approaching Kenya Kwanzaa during their health charter, one of the issues they were saying they even wanted a, a doctor service commission. Because like with the teacher service commission, there is no doubt what you're supposed to earn. And so it's, that is why the CBAs with the, with the teachers is more successful because it's being done across board. So right now, I think this is an opportunity. As unfortunate as the strike is, this is an opportunity for us to relook. And I think in the end, mm. the doctors will benefit. And, so, so, so it, and, and also, yeah. and as I'm saying, the, when, uh, when, I, when I, I mean, what all the drama says is, is correct. But then again, He's, uh, you, when you say it in an insightful way, that is why we are not, we're having a breakdown of communication, and that is why we are not able to reach an end. I think what we should what, be telling the insightful? doctors, you know, when you tell the doctors there's 11 billion here spent. And but it's and true. That, it's a fact. Facts are stubborn, my dear yes, sister. But, yes, but when you say that, the, that is why people, both sides take a hard stand at the end of the day. So what we should be saying is yeah. we value the doctors. We want you to come on the table. And they've been on the table. During this time of the 26-day strike, mm. don't think there were no conversations. There were conversations at the ministry level. There were conversations with the, at the council of governors level. The, and so during these 26 days, it wasn't that nothing was being okay. done. The, and the speaker, uh, allow, allow me and to so take it we'll, is we'll, a time to we'll, do we'll, that. We'll come and conclude on that um, after this break as you continue the conversation. Remember, also speaking about the fake fertilizer, the Minister of Agriculture now admits there is a problem, but the deputy president says it's not that widespread. We'll talk about that later.